Over the past two years, our country has been struggling to recover from one of the worst economic recessions in our history. Democrats have worked to pass legislation that would create jobs. It's been our top priority. But at every turn, we've faced resistance from ideologues who care more about winning political points and protecting the wealthy than doing what is right for hardworking American families. That is exactly what happened during this debt ceiling debate. Instead of passing a clean extension and getting to work on our economy, we've been, we've been forced to vote on a last minute deal to prevent the economic catastrophe that would result in default. I've spent the last few weeks and months highlighting the real life consequences of default for New Mexico families at a time when families are already dealing with extremely tight budgets. A default would mean increased cost for just about everything. From food to gas to housing to sending the kids to college, it would also jeopardize critical federal benefits that veterans, seniors, and others depend on to pay the bills and stay healthy. It would mean more than 360,000 New Mexicans in danger of losing their Social Security benefits. It would mean another, th another 300,000 who would rely on Medicare, seeing their health care disrupted. It would mean 174,000 New Mexico veterans may not receive their benefits, and more than 1,400 active duty military personnel may not receive paychecks for their services. But it wouldn't stop there. Even if you don't depend on a check from the federal government every month for health care or retirement or other benefits, you would still feel the financial pain of default. That's because mortgage payments would increase by more than $1,000 for the average family. And credit card interest would go up by $250. Why is it, you ask? Because the interest you pay on just about every loan you have, whether it's a house or a car or college tuition, it's based on the interest rates the Treasury pays. And if, and if that interest rate rises, as it would in a default, so does the interest rate on just about everything else. New Mexicans can't afford that. America can't afford that. And it is to prevent New Mexico families from these repercussions that I will vote for this legislation. But that's the only reason, because to be frank, almost everything else about this deal stinks, and it stinks to high heaven. As my friend, the good senator from Vermont, said yesterday, this package is grotesquely unfair and bad economic policy. While I firmly believe we must take steps to rein in our deficit, this package is far from the ideal way to do so. I hear every day from New Mexicans about the need to rebuild our economy. We should be investing in innovation and infrastructure and creating new jobs, but we don't do that with this deal. Instead of cutting excess and investing wisely in programs that create jobs, this package will mean fewer dollars for job training, for education programs and housing, hampering our ability to create a long-term recovery. Poll after poll shows a majority of American, Americans support shared sacrifice in this recovery. Unfortunately, this package also falls woefully short on that count. While we, while we did manage to protect important programs like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and nutrition assistance programs, there are still many, many important programs that will be on the chopping block. Initiatives like housing assistance, help for small businesses, and rural economic development programs, just to name a few. This, all the while, the tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans and large corporations remain untouched. This package is what happens when ideologues bent on nationalizing their extreme agendas get their way. 
the fracture that we've seen among Republicans in the House over these last few months has much broader effect than just in that chamber. Their staunch refusal to compromise at the expense of struggling families has pushed this debate and our nation to the brink. Instead of having a frank conversation about how we can repair our economy and reach a simple compromise, we've been forced to vote today to avoid default. With this plan, we get nowhere near the heart of our economic problems. Instead, we kick the can down the road a couple of years. All the while, the problem continues to grow, impeding our recovery and crippling our economic competitiveness. Once this vote is taken and the immediate crisis is passed, it will be all too easy to stick our heads back in the sand and pretend everything is okay. I rise today to say this, everything is not okay. And it won't be okay until we have the courage and leadership to institute tax reform, not just trimming around the edges or rearranging the numbers to create the illusion of savings when in fact nothing has changed. I'm talking about substantive tax reform that is the result of a national conversation about our priorities as a society. We have the opportunity to do just that with the commission being created by this plan. But it will take guts and leadership and hard choices. Our national deficit is a burden that drags us down competitively and requires serious negotiations, not just concessions to those who see this as a political opportunity to push their personal agendas. We must all come to the table and do what is best for our nation.